If you want to learn Japanese and don't know where to start, then this is the video for you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is John and I have been learning languages for a while now. One of the most helpful tools I've used for learning a language is Anki. Anki is a smart flashcard app that uses spaced repetition to help you remember things in a very efficient manner. It's a great way to prime your brain with new words for your target language to build a small foundation or solidify words that you've learned through your immersion. And in this case, we'll set it up so you can build a foundation for Japanese. Best of all, you won't have to spend any money on it because everything I talk about in this video is going to be free. We will do a super easy walkthrough and in how to install it, how to set it up and optimize it for learning Japanese. All of the steps will have the timestamps in the description box below so you can skip to the parts that are more relevant to you or skip parts that aren't relevant for you. For starters, let's talk about what flashcards are if you don't already know what it is. Flashcards are basically a simple way Way of testing yourself. For example, you have this card with the question, what is the meaning of the kanji and the meaning on the other side. And by repeatedly testing yourself, you strengthen the memory of the information that's on the card. And because you want to prime your brain with more words, you create more of these cards. This time only with the Japanese word in the front because the question will always be the same. And then we just go through them every day until eternity. Now going through the same cards every day seems like a good idea because it will strengthen the memory of it because of the high repetition. But you probably test yourself way more often than you need to because you can remember things longer than a day. Plus, if you test yourself every day, you accumulate an insane amount of cards because the pile only grows. This also means you're testing yourself on words that you already know, essentially wasting time that you could be spending on learning something new instead. And this is exactly where spaced repetition comes in. Instead of putting a card we have answered correctly on the pile for tomorrow, we put it on the pile for the day after tomorrow, or in a week, or in a month. The distance grows whenever we answer correctly, or shrinks when we get it wrong or don't know the answer. You can already see how this would save a lot of time since we don't have to look at every card every day anymore. And Anki manages all of your flashcards and the spacing for you. Okay, so let's install it from the official website apps.ankiweb.net. I'm on a Mac, so I will download the Mac version. You download whatever is the correct version for your platform. Then I will sign up for an Anki web account to enable backups and syncing. Cloud backups are nice because when your computer breaks or you get a new computer, you don't want to lose all of your data. Okay, so now after we've installed it, we open the app and it looks like this. The first thing I want to do is sign into the account that I've created on Anki web to enable the backups. Then I install an add-on that's called Review Heatmap. I really like this add-on for everything I do with Anki because once you've installed it, you get a little heat map in the bottom and it shows you streaks, how many days you've studied, how many cards you've studied, and gives you little projections in that. I found this helps me to stay motivated a bit more because when I see, oh, I've got a 460 day streak, I don't really wanna break it, so I just do my studies. To install any add-on into Anki, you go to the Anki webpage of the add-on, scroll to this code and copy it. Then we open Anki and press tools, add-ons, get add-ons, paste the add-on code into this field and press okay. Then restart Anki. Done. Now, if you're completely new to Japanese, you probably still have to learn hiragana and katakana to be able to read the words that we want to learn. We will now add each of these letters in form of a flashcard to Anki. Earlier in the video, I talked about creating cards for everything that we want to test ourselves on, but this would be quite tedious and unnecessary work for these cookie cutter decks. Lucky for us, we can use other people's work that have already created the cards and published it to the internet. So that's what we're gonna do. So we don't have to create every single card by ourselves. In this video's description box below, I've left a link to a deck that you can download labeled Kana. Please do that. Now we open Anki, press import file in the bottom and then select the file that you've just downloaded. And that's your first Anki deck imported. We will adjust the deck options after importing the next deck. Again, I've left a link in the description box below for the 2K, 6K deck. So please find that and download it. Just like with the Kana deck, we're leaning on the work of other people who have already put in a huge amount of effort to create these cards for us. Now we open Anki, press import file in the bottom and then select the file you have just downloaded. I recommend this deck specifically because the words are ordered in frequency of usage, as in words that are more common you learn in the beginning and words that are less common you learn much later on. The benefit of that should be fairly obvious. Not only that, but every word in this deck has a sentence attached to it and audio for the word and the sentence and more information for these words. So you get a little bit of context with them as well. Okay, let's optimize the deck options so we get the most out of Anki we can. When you hover over the 2K, 6K deck, you see a cogwheel appear. Click on that to open the settings. These are the default deck options. So if you change anything there, 
they will be applied to all of the decks. So now we change the maximum reviews a day in preset to 500 or any other very high number you will never hit. And then the new cards per day setting in preset to five. Preset just means it counts for all of the decks. Now we scroll down to advanced and enable FSRS. This is just an advanced space repetition algorithm that adjusts the distance or like the intervals that you have in between the cards automatically. We will leave this desired retention parameter as is, but if you ever feel like that you're not seeing cards enough or you're seeing cards too often, then this is where you make the adjustment. The value here can be between 0.7 and 0.99. So if you put it to 0.99, which is the highest value, for example, and then click outside of the box here, then a little simulation pops up and it says a 100 day interval will become nine days, which means when you answer a card correctly, even if it was 100 days or it should have been 100 days, it would be nine days. Conversely, setting it to something lower like 0.75 will increase the interval. So instead of 100 day interval, it will become a 332 day interval. Again, we we'll leave it at 90. You can adjust this however you feel like is right for you. There's also this field with FSRS parameters. Once you have a thousand reviews, you can press this optimize FSRS parameters and the parameters are supposed to slightly improve the efficiency of remembering the stuff. This will adjust the parameters up at the top automatically. Do this about once a month, once you've got the 1000 reviews. Save and then onto the color deck options. So you see how the deck options here are the same as the ones from the other deck. This is because we have adjusted the default preset before. This time we want to create a new preset for this deck. So we create a new preset by cloning the default and then giving it the name Kana and then press OK. So now you see it's already there. It's already used by this deck. And now we set the new cards a day to 24 or maybe even 48 if you're really keen. Usually setting your card limit that high isn't something I would recommend, but for the Kana it's fine in my opinion because you can learn all of the Kana, Hiragana and Katakana in probably a week, maybe 10 days. So if you do 24 a day, it will take you roughly 10 days. If you do 48, it will be five days, and then maybe you need a little bit more repetition and then you have them all in. If this becomes too much for you, then just set it to something lower. It won't affect your other decks. So the last thing we want to do is press this little chevron to the right of the save button and then save it to all sub decks. This is just to make sure that all the information, all the preset information that we've just adjusted will be propagated to all the decks in the deck as well. And now you could technically already start learning. You've got the decks and you just have to go through them. You've got a little bit of gamification with the review heat map, but I would like to optimize the 2K 6K deck just a little bit. Plus I will explain to you how to make your own modifications to Anki decks, because if you wanted to ever change something that I've just optimized, because you don't think it's the best way to do it, then you can do that. If you look at the cards of the 2K 6K deck, they look like this right now. I've already modified the cards in the deck for you. For example, I've added this link directly to jisho.org on the back side. So whenever you click on this link, you get some extra information, for example, for the kanji that are used in that specific word. But I want to teach you how to make your own modifications. And this is why we will now add two things that will make priming yourself with the words from the 2K 6K deck just slightly easier. We will add one, a sentence hint to the front side of the card and a pitch accent information field to the back side. I don't think it's necessary to focus on pitch accents when you're completely new to the language, but I do feel like it helps to have that visualization there. Personally, I just briefly look at it. If even, I definitely don't fail cards if I get the pitch accent wrong. To modify cards, we click on tools, manage node types, and then we find the card type that we want to adjust. And in our case, this is Japanese 75658. It's the one with the 5,999 notes. We select it and then press cards. Now you have this little window pop up with the front template, the back template, and the styling. And then on the right side, you have a front preview and a back preview. And don't worry, I will keep this very simple. So this is just a little bit of HTML. We just create it like this. give it a style so it has a different font size. And in Anki, you can create hints that will not be displayed until you click on it to reveal it. So all you have to do is to write hint, colon, and the field you're accessing. 
and then we press save. So now whenever you click on expression, it will show the expression. To add the pitch accent information, we will get a plugin that will bulk add this to the cards automatically. Just like before, we will open tools, add-ons, get add-ons, and then paste the code from the add-on page into this text box, then finalize with okay. With the add-on installed, you can now press tools, pitch accent, and then bulk add. This opens a little pop-up saying, which deck would you like to extend? Search for John's core 2K, 6K, yada, yada, and press okay. Now we select the field with the Japanese expression as in the field that has the kanji in it. This is vocabulary kanji and already selected. Press okay. Now select the field with the reading and this is vocabulary kana. So we select that and press okay. Last step, select the field where the pitch accent should be shown. Here we'll select vocabulary kana again. So we'll be shown just below that and press okay, done. It should look like this. If you have dark mode like me, you need to add one extra thing and that is to add some styling to invert the color. So we go to tools, manage node types, select Japanese 75658, the one with the 5,999 nodes, and then press cards. Now select styling and type this in the bottom of the input box. So now when you go through the cards, you see on the front side, this link that you can click and reveal whatever is behind it. In this case, it's the whole sentence for the word. Hiding the information behind this hint field gives you a little bit of leeway, depending on if you need the extra context for the translation of the word or not. When you go through your cards during your study sessions, I would recommend focusing on picking either again or good. Again being like a fail and good being the pass mark. I personally never use the easy option and only extremely rarely the hard option. Pretty much only when I want to see the card earlier than what the good option displays. Okay, at this point we're essentially done and you're ready to start learning Japanese. But before you do, I want to be very clear. Anki is a supplementary tool to language learning. These two decks will help you get familiar with the language and probably learn a few words. Still, the best way to learn a language is through natural immersion in the language, as in reading books or listening to podcasts, watching series, watching anime, that kind of stuff. So you can get a feel on how the language is used and how the words are in context. Definitely go through the decks, but don't get too caught up in finishing all of the cards in the 2K, 6K deck, and maybe even stop after 2000 words if you feel like you hate it. If you want to learn a more holistic approach to learning Japanese, so further than Anki, then I can recommend watching this video. Like and subscribe if you want this helpful. Peace.